For timing problems, you need to remember these two formulas. And if they don't give you a t-skew, then you can just ignore it. Now, t-set of t-hold and t-skew are properties of your flip-flops. So I'm putting them here. Now, what are these t-p-c-q and t-c-c-q? So you look at the next letter. If it's p, is propagation. And if it's c, is contamination. So propagation has to deal with longest path, and contamination has to deal with shortest path. Now CQ means clock to Q, and when you see clock, you know that it has to deal with flip-flop. So TPCQ would be here, and TCCQ is also here. Now for each gate, there's also a TPD, which is the propagation delay of the gate, and CD, which is the contamination of that gate. However, this TPD is different from this TPD right here. The TPD right here is the TPD of your combinational logic. So you need to find the longest path. So let's say my longest path is from here to here. Then my TPD is going to be the TPD of this gate plus the TPD of this gate plus the TPD of this gate. Same thing for contamination delay. This TCD is the TCD of your combinational logic, and you need to find the shortest path. So if my shortest path is from here to here, and it's going through one gate, so my TCD is going to be the TCD of this gate. Let's say if there's another gate here, then your TCD is going to be the TCD of this gate plus the TCD of another gate here. Now I'm going to group them into two different groups. Here if you see frequency, you know you need to use this formula. If you see something like propagation, longest path, or maximum. If you see whole time violation, or something like minimum, then you know you need to use this formula. Okay, so now let's look at this problem right here. Oh, when I say longest path, it's the longest path between two flip-flops. And same thing for shortest path. Now let's look at this problem right here. It asks you to find the maximum clock frequency of the circuit. So we see frequency. Frequency is our keyword. So we know that we need to use this formula. Now what is frequency? Frequency is 1 over t. This is in physics, right? So frequency is 1 over your period. So this is what we want to find. Okay, once we have this t, we'll find out what frequency is. So we have tpcq. tpcq is 40 picoseconds. We have T setup, which is 50 picoseconds. And they said there's no clock skew, so we can just ignore this term. Now we have to find TPD. And to find TPD, we need to look at the longest path between two flip-flops. So let's look at flip-flop 1. So here, flip-flop 1, the output of flip-flop 1, I can go back to flip-flop 1. So this is one possible path. And flip-flop 1, I can also go to flip-flop 2. And I can also go from flip-flop 1 to flip-flop 3. Right? Now let's look at flip-flop 2. So 2 can also go back to itself. And 2 can also go to 1. So 2 to 1. And 2 can also go to 3. However, from 2, if we want to go to 3, we need to go through flip-flop 1. So we only want to find the path between two flip-flops. So we don't consider 2 and 3. All right. Now let's look at 3. Flip-flop 3, the output of flip-flop 3 is just going to go through this AND gate and output. So it's not, it's not going anywhere. So we don't consider that. So we have five possible paths, and we need to find out which one is the longest one. So let's look at this one. 
So one going back to one, we can go through this gate. That's one. Go to this gate. Two. This gate is three. So it's going through three gates. Now from one to two, we can go through here. Come back here, and here. So it's also three gates. And from one to three, we can go from here directly to three. So it's just one gate. Two to two. So we're gonna go like this, coming back here. So that's one gate, two gates, and then coming here. So that's two. Now two to one, here. Come to this or gate. That's one gate. Another gate. That's two gates. And then coming to flip flop one. So that's two gates. So my longest path is three gates. So either this or this. So my TPD is going to be the TPD of this gate plus this plus this. And since all of them have the same value, TPD is thirty five for all of them. I just have to multiply it by three. So my TC is going to be greater than PCQ is 40 plus 3 times 35 plus 50. And TSKU, we don't consider TSKU, so we just ignore it. Or you can just put 0. It doesn't matter. So once we have this value, we can calculate the frequency doing 1 divided by t, and that's going to be our part 1. Now part 2 is how much clock skew can the circuit tolerate before it might experience a whole time violation. So we see whole time violation, that's our keyword. So we're going to use this formula, right? So we need to find what t skew is. Now ccq we have, which is 30, and t hold is 60. Now we have to find out what TCD is. So TCD, we need to look at the shortest path between two flip-flops. So these are our paths, right? And the shortest path is one, going through one gate, from flip-flop one to flip-flop three. So the TCD of our combination of logic is just going to be the TCD of this gate, which is 25. So we can just plug it in. This is 30 plus 25 greater than T hold. T hold is 60 plus, plus T skew. So from here we can find out what T skew is. Okay, so remember these keywords and these two formulas.